Hello, and welcome to this episode of Murder, Mystery, and Cold Case Radio Theater. Episode 1, Icelandic Christmas Folklore. Grela the Yule Witch. This is one you won't want to miss, and not for the littles to hear. So put them to bed, grab your blanket, get your favorite spot on the couch, put your feet up, because we all know there's always, always something underneath. Just waiting for you to put your foot down so you can reach out its cold, clammy hand Wrap its long, calloused fingers around your ankle. Pull you down to the depths of hell. Welcome to Episode 1, Icelandic Christmas Folklore. Have you heard of Grela, her husband, Lepiduli, her sons, the Yule Lads, and... The Yule Cat. Grela is described as being a giantess way back in the Norse mythology in the 13th century. But it was not until the 17th century that the Christmas connection was made. She is described as being enormous and repulsive a beggar woman. The oldest poems about Gryla says she walks around asking parents to give her their disobedient children, but the parents can easily chase her away by giving her food or just simply by chasing her. Early poems claim she lived in a cottage, but in later poems, she and her family live in a far away cave. According to folklore, she has been married three times. Her last husband, Lepidule, is said to be lazy and stays mostly at home with the cat from hell and kids, dozens of kids. Their cat, the Yule Cat, is described as being big and black and vicious and can be found lurking about the snowy country at Christmas time, looking for capturing and eating people who did not receive anything new to wear before Christmas Eve. Even though he is said to be a part of ancient tradition, actual written accounts of the Yule Cat have only come to light in the 19th century. Farmers use the threat of being eaten by the Yule Cat to get their workers to finish processing the autumn wool before Christmas. Those who took part of the work received new clothes as a reward, but those who didn't, those who were lazy and didn't want to work, got nothing and would be looking over their shoulder for the rest of their days, waiting, watching, and listening for any little sound as the monstrous cat preyed upon their souls and devoured them. This perception of the old cat being a man-eating beast came partially from the poems of Johannes Yer Kotlum, some 
Stories say the beasts of the cat simply ate the food of those who did not receive new clothes. The first mention of the sons of Gryla, the Yule Lads, is in the 17th century poem called Poem of Gryla. I did try to find this poem. I really wanted to include that, but I could not find it. The number of Yule Lads and what they were like greatly depended on where the tale was being told, with each one being either a simple prankster to a murderous monster who eats children. The tales were used to scare children into being good, not screaming, yelling, obnoxious brats, much like more modern boogeyman. But the king of Denmark objected to their use as a disciplinary tool. Wow, doesn't that sound like today? In the late 18th century, a poem mentioned there were 13 of them. So in the mid-19th century, John Aramison gathered folk tales and following the Brothers Grimm style, wrote a poem giving the names of the 13 Yule lads and their personalities. The Yule lads are mischievous pranksters who either steal from or do harmless pranks to people of the towns and countrysides. Their names all have to do with what they do best, such as the 13th lad, Curtis Snyker, or candle stealer, follows children in order to steal their candles, which were made of tallow back then, and tallow was edible. One by one, they would leave over the 13 nights before Christmas and are gone for 13 nights each, which is the Yule. Even though they are pranksters, they also have a chore to do, to leave gifts. Children would leave their shoes on windowsills at night. And the Yule lads would leave a small gift if you were good. If you were naughty, you would find in your shoe a potato. Can you imagine finding a potato knowing that you would be eaten? Now let's talk about the real monster in the family. Gryla, the mother, the wife, the one that is feared the most by townsfolk. In older tales, Gryla was pictured as a troll, but not yet linked to Christmas. More current tales say Gryla can sense children who are being bad all year long. It is said she and her sons and husbands cannot have the light of day touch them or they will turn to stone. So Gryla will go out at night to gather bad children at Christmas time, especially because the nights are the longest. She searches the nearby towns for her meals snatches the children from their beds, sometimes with the help of her Yule cat, puts them in her sack, carries them home when she has enough in her giant sack, which she carries on her back. She devours the children with her fav as her favorite snack. Her favorite food 
is bad kids do, which she has an unstoppable appetite for, complete, I'm sure, with potatoes. And according to legend and still true today, there is never a shortage of food. So let's take a moment to explore the old song, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Listen to those lyrics and think about this. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. So you better not shout. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Gryla and her family are coming to town. I hope you all enjoyed this little episode of uh, Radio Theater. I plan on doing these about once a week. Different ones, different cases, different mysteries. Everybody, thank you so much for listening in. Everybody, have a wonderful day. If you have suggestions, drop it down below in the comments. Let me know what you think. Thanks so much for listening in. Bye, guys.